call the City of Apache Junction Council meeting to order. The uh, invocation will be led by Vice Mayor Wilson and the pledge by Council Member Rizzi. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we are once again enjoying the cooler temperatures in our sunny days. We enjoy the ability to get back out <coughs> involved with the outside events, accomplishing outside activities to include chores. We also thank you for this area we live in and enjoy again our great opportunities. We also ask, you, ask for your support for Mickey, Denny, and her family and friends as they celebrate the life of Dwayne, her husband. We all remember him and Mickey as they operated the and well enjoyed restaurant, Mickey D's. We all express our thoughts and prayers to the entire family and friends. We also ask for your support for one of our fellow members here on the City Council, Dave Walden, recently experiencing the passing of his mother, as well as the recent passing of his brother's son. Please be with the entire family as they deal with these two passings of the family members and give them the strength they need. We also ask for your support for our staff and first responders as they continue to help keep this community a great place to live and work and raise a family. We also ask to extend this support to our military members and their families, wherever they're serving throughout the world. In the Lord's name, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Roll call. Mayor Surdy. Here. Vice Mayor Wilson. Here. Councilmember Barker. Here. Councilmember Evans. Here. Councilmember Rizzi. Present. Councilmember Strubo. Here. Councilmember Waldron. Here. All members present. You have a quorum, Your Honor. Do we have a motion on the consent agenda? Your Honor. Yes. I move that the consent agenda be accepted as presented and that a professional services agreement with Tish, that person, yes. For the preparation of a five-year update of the development fee study, land use assumptions, infrastructure, improvements plan, and development fees, as well as an update to volume two, chapter seven, development fee ordinance in an amount not to exceed $68,600 be approved and that the bid responses for the Winchester Road Sidewalk Improvements Project from Southern Avenue to 16th Avenue be rejected as recommended by city staff since all bids are not within budgeted funds for the project, and that the award of contract to Sunland Asphalt for the reconstruction of Idaho Road from Lost Dutchman Boulevard to McKillops Road through government procurement Alliance Cooperative Contract Number 17-16P-05 in the amount of $515,378.27 plus a 10% contingency for unforeseen change orders in the amount of $51,537.82 for a total not to exceed $566,916.09 be approved. Second. Roll call. Vice Mayor Wilson? Yes. Councilmember Struble? Yes. Councilmember Waldron? Yes. Councilmember Rizzi? Yes. Councilmember Barker? Yes. Councilmember Evans? Yes. Mayor Surdy? Yes. Unanimous, Your Honor. I have a proclamation. This is for Law Enforcement Records Personnel Appreciation Day. Whereas law enforcement agencies throughout the state depend on law enforcement records personnel to provide them with vital services, and whereas law enforcement records provide personnel provide the professional link between citizens, the local governing bodies, and agencies of government at other level, and where, whereas law enforcement records personnel are crucial to helping law enforcement agencies identify, pursue, capture, and process suspected law violators, and whereas these professionals continually use their expertise and experience to assist in maintaining accurate criminal history on a state and national level, and whereas it is important to recognize Arizona's law enforcement records personnel for their valuable con contributions to our law enforcement system, 
Now therefore I, Jeff Surdy, Mayor of the City of Apache Junction, Arizona, do hereby proclaim Thursday, November 8th, 2018 as Law Enforcement's Record Personnel Appreciation Day in Apache Junction, Arizona of Pinal County. Chief, will you accept this? Yep. On behalf of the, uh, your records department and the police department, I would gladly accept that. They do a great job. Your arm freeze. Yeah. <clears throat> Does anyone have any announcements or current events? Let's you start no. on this side. Go ahead, Dave. Can I? I'll go first. Okay, I'm going <clears> to <throat> touch on some that others are probably going to talk more about. Okay. Um, I had the pleasure of attending CAFA's open house and meeting Ray and enjoying all of the wonderful staff there. <coughs> Um, that organization has grown so much. I'm so proud of that organization. I'm so proud to have it here in our community. Thank you. Um, I also attended the first Genesis Tea Party, and it was lovely. We had over 100 women who came, some in very fancy hats, and all the tables were decorated like Alice in Wonderland. Mm -hmm. And I dragged Gail. And I think she thought it was going to be really boring, but she had a good time. <laughs> it was a great tea party, and it was an effort to raise money. It was a fundraiser for Genesis. Um, also attended the Youth Matters Conference with Gail, and she'll talk about that. But there's one thing I do want to talk about from there. We did a colors thing. You're supposed to have four colors, and they all are supposed to be balanced. Well, I found out. Nothing new. I'm not balanced. <laughs> However, I am green-blue, which means I'm purple, which is my favorite color, so it all worked out very well. Uh, Gail, of course, is orange, and we all knew that. Uh, I also attended the Halloween festival. Liz still here. Liz, you guys did another fantastic job. Um, Chief Kelly and I had the, the pleasure and privilege of judging the costumes. Oh, my goodness. There must have been 500 kids. I've never seen so many kids in my whole life in, in crazy, wonderful, wonderful costumes. It was great. It was a lovely thing. Also attended the town hall, Pinell, Pinell County Town Hall, where the youth stole the show. They were fantastic. Um, they had lots of great stuff to say. It was about civil discourse, something we all need to have a little lesson on now, I think. And it was very well done. Um, also, went to the farmer's market on Saturday. That was marvelous, as it always is. Uh, had the opportunity to listen to the open mic on Friday night. And last but not least, I got to watch Bryant on the radio show. Mm -hmm. He was terrific. We have a great city manager. So it's been a busy couple weeks. <laughs> Dave? Uh, <clears throat> just a reminder, this weekend is the Festival of Superstitions. Um, all the activities will be taking place at Flatiron Park. And then Sunday morning, starting at 9.30, is our annual uh, Veterans Day Parade, starting at uh, Phelps in the Trail. And then immediately following that, the, at the Festival of Superstition, uh, about 11.30 or 12, will be, um, they'll, they'll do a thing to uh, do tribute to veterans. So that will be at the north end of the park. So come on down. It's going to be a good weekend. It's a full weekend. It's going to be busy. It should be a good time. be a car show. And so come on down. Um, I also want to thank CAFA for their services in our community. I had the opportunity to attend and uh, meet our new director, and we, we just thank you for everything that you do in our community and for the people in our community so much. Parks and Rec, again, awesome job at the Halloween event. I, I don't think there was any more space on the grass for, for any, uh, anybody else. It was awesome. Very, very well attended. Um, we have, again, this year our annual... Uh, Thanksgiving dinner at the Boys and Girls Club, Gobble Till You Wobble, November 14th from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Um, fam they're um, having uh, lots of fun, pie, uh, free food, bring the family out. There's going to be some entertainment at our local Boys and Girls Club. Um, again, November 14th, 
that's at 1755 North Idaho Road. And also, just a reminder, we have um, our second annual, uh, the Focal Point Committee had started um, a light uh, the trail competition for businesses and organizations throughout Apache Junction to light up and decorate uh, during the holidays, um, hopefully to make Apache Junction the go-to place to come and see Christmas lights. It's open to all businesses and all organizations, and uh, you can contact Judy Lutz at 480-233-0111 or myself at 480-330-7744 to sign up. It's free to sign up. Um, the community will judge, and uh, it's just going to be great fun. We just want to make our whole uh, community the go-to place again at the holidays, around the holidays, to see Christmas lights. Want me to start? Anybody on this side? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. All right. Um, I, for those of you that don't know, I'm very heavily involved with the uh, horse community. And uh, the Arizona Horse Council recently did a Sharing the Trails conference this past weekend. And it was very well attended. We had different people from different types of organizations. We had BLM present. Uh, we had the Forest Service. We had state land. Um, we, we had a lot of people involved in the, the, the trails and the trail usages throughout the, the state and the, the nation. And putting this all together was a, a task that was a long, involved, and very tedious uh, opportunity for me and a learning process as well. And I turned to one, one of the city staff, uh, Al, to uh, assist me in notifying, uh, getting out the information to the, the media. And he was very helpful. So we put a thank you into our uh, program. And it states, and thank you, the City of Apache Junction, for support and assistance in making this symposium a success. So I wanted everyone to know that it was a success. It turned out great. Uh, we even had Temple Grandin as our guest speaker. And uh, it was very interesting in talking to her. And uh, she is a uh, very wonderful person and, and very talkative, uh, has opinions of just about everything. So. Uh, Again, thank you for the support. Um, Robin and I, we had two neighborhood meetings recently mm -hmm. in our subdivisions, and Robin and I attended both of those meetings. Um, the chief, Mike Weaver from Public Works, Al Bravo was there for, um, and Chief Barber came from the fire district, and I, God, I wish I could read lips. I can't. Liz. Oh, and Liz was there, too. But the, the thing that was interesting, both neighborhoods, very nice neighborhoods, had the same problem, and it's parking on both sides of the interior streets as far as safety for kids being seen playing. Both wanted some kind of notice. Um, the chief explained greatly how we could do a soft reminder about not parking on the streets for days at a time and the safety factor. Chief Barber also spoke about the fire truck and safety piece of that, um, allowing people to extend the driveway so three cars could actually park on the driveway, not just the two normal ones. Very nice meetings. They were all appreciative that we came and it was just a great night. Um, just to follow up on what Robin had said about Pinal County Town Hall, it was really interesting. Um, Matt McNulty, Al Bravo, Bryant Powell, myself, Dave and Robin were all there. But as the youth were speaking, and um, Dylan Conrad from Apache Junction High School was there um, representing us. But as we were talking about the different social medias in the Twitter and the Snapchat and the Facebook, apparently only the old people use Facebook. 
and they're just into the Snapchat and with Matt, our information technology guru, stood up and said, okay, so how does the city tap in mm -hmm. to your Snapchat so that we can let you guys know what we're doing if you're not looking at Facebook and you're not doing the, tw the Twitter, which I don't tweet, I don't Twitter, I don't do any of those things. But a very informative, um, one of the guest speakers <coughs> as an employer spoke about his company was hiring and his staff brought three final finalist applications, gave them to him. He didn't even look at the resumes. He went on Facebook and all of the social media sites to see who he wanted to work with. And it was the more positive type um, people and that's, that's the nuts and bolts of what we're coming down to. Um, on the youth matter, I just wanted to include that Sharon Steinard was a guest speaker there, as well as Dr. Krista Anderson actually had the guts to ride down on a bus <laughs> and stay the whole day with 200 junior high students that have a lot of enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the keynote speaker was Dr. Kent, uh, Mr. Kent Voltmer, the Pinal County attorney. So it was a really, um, this was the first youth leadership and understanding of youth matters that we've had for the junior high group versus the high school. So it was kind of a whole different um, atmosphere. Also, one last thing, the Community Development Corporation, we, there was five of us that helped out a resident who had called us that needed help with some items at his property. Um, we went out, we painted, we cleaned up, and we're continuing to help. It was someone that contacted us directly. We have finally gotten a banner and a tablecloth which we had set up at the community garden on Saturday, kind of as the first time to get the word out about what the CDC is trying to do in our neighborhoods. That's it. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> Take it away. Okay. Um, I got a few things. There was, uh, I can't really follow up on much of everything. Um, I'm not gonna read what I, I spoke into this machine that they've got us using here, these iPads or whatever they are. I spoke into it, and I'm not gonna read what it says because it's not what I said, but uh, we'll try to muddle through this. Um, I attended the CAFA um, open house, and um, it was amazing. There, it was, there, they had some, uh, one of the um, vendors or entities that was, uh, was there and had a booth or had a talk was the um, uh, Bikers Against um, Abuse. Baca, Bikers. Against abuse. Yeah. yeah. Child, child abuse. Yeah. Bi yeah, Bikers Against Child Abuse. There you go. Amazing program that I don't know if anybody knew was out there. Um, and it's something that, that um, you know, they, they try to stay, uh, uh, they have a great service and um, um, adults need to be aware of it. So if adults are out there, look up BACA, <coughs> Bikers Against Child Abuse, and look at it. Um, it was really uh, inspirational as to what they do and how they serve children that um, are in abusive situations. Um, um, and it, it's just, it was just amazing. And everything else that, that CAFA is doing. Um, I was able to attend the, um, I'm, I'm sure Mayor Sergi's probably gonna talk about it, the Mayor's Breakfast. And um, that was, a, a, again, <laughs> it was a great uh, venue to show what the various uh, nonprofits and just people in the city are doing to make Apache Junction a better place to live. Um, you know, it, it, it's true, it, it's, I'm gonna read our vision statement because it's a truly a, a, an example of it. Apache Junction is a diverse community of natural beauty and heritage that offers prosperity, compassion, and forward thinking to its residents, businesses, and visitors. 
And that's just a huge example, as well as all the other nonprofits and just private citizens that do so much for our city. Um, I was, uh, a couple weeks ago, I, on a Saturday, I was able to attend a luncheon at ASU. It was um, sponsored by a, a, um, a youth program, or college youth program at ASU called the Faithful City. And they do pretty much the same thing um, there. They work with various um, other nonprofits within cities and churches, religious organizations, to uh, collaborate to provide services and, and try not to uh, uh, duplicate uh, services and resources so that they can be more effective in reaching the people that really do need the help. Um, it was a very inspirational, again, it was a lot of uh, high, uh, college kids that, that um, actually do the work. Um, one of the uh, professors is the leader of it, but he has the college kids actually doing all the work and, and um, collaboration with all the nonprofits and such. And so it's something that can really be, can, um, be, uh, can be done, and it teaches the young people how to serve in the future. So that was a big thing. A um, couple other things. Um, November 14th and 16th, we're going to be holding the final auditions for the AJ Kids Idol. Um, Anybody who is in kindergarten through 12th grade that has any talents, whether it might be um, magic, singing, dancing, whatever it might be, you can show up that night and we can audition you for the actual show, which is at Barleen's on January 27, 2019. And um, we're looking to uh, raise a bunch of money for um, the schools again. And then last but not least, I talked about this the last couple months, we um, had our first AJ open mic night um, this past Friday night. It was a bit chilly, but that's okay. Um, we had three uh, participants that, that, that entertained us for about an hour and a half. Um, and we had about 15 to 20 people show up and, and um, observe. We're looking to build on that, and there again, it's anybody out there who has a, a musical talent that wants to show it off. Um, it's a great venue because the people that are watching are not judging, and they really truly enjoy watching somebody who has the fortitude or guts to get up on the stage and perform in front of an audience. And that's what it's all about, is because we're trying to just have another event for the young people, basically. Um, the next event will be on November 17th. It'll be a week from Saturday, and it'll be at Horizon Health Open Heart. Earth Heart, oh, Earth Heart Park. I get all that mixed up, but anyway, from 6 to 9, that's a Saturday night. And uh, come and just show up. Bring your own chair and blanket. This time we will promise to have some kind of hot chocolate or something warmer to drink other than cold <laughs> water and pop. So um, welcome anybody. That's a lot of announcements. We're going to have to use, start using the three-minute timer up there on ourselves. So uh, I wasn't going to talk about the mayor's breakfast because the public doesn't really get to go there, but it's just a bunch of people that really want to do the right thing to solve a lot of problems for people that can't help themselves, and it's very inspiring. Uh, I want to say what a privilege it is that we have the Zao Theater in town. And they're doing a production right now, and uh, they're talking about it all the way in Phoenix. They're doing the Hunchback of Notre Dame, and it's uh, got a lot of local players in it. And I haven't had a chance to get down there, but that takes place at SMES at the old high school down there. And uh, everybody needs to try to get, I guess this is the best one they've ever done. they got really elaborate sets and everything, so it's very cool. Like Dave said about the parade, but a lot of people go home after the parade, and afterwards, at Flatiron Park, there's very moving uh, ceremony down there. And it's uh, this year, the, uh, I think the, the Legion is the host, and then it goes from the Legion to the two VFWs. I think the Legion is the host this time. And they do some really cool honoring of, of the, guests, of the uh, vets down there. And today's election season, voting's over, so please take down your signs and tell everybody else to take down your signs. We're sick of them. No, and the commercials should be off. We turn the TV on tonight. We shouldn't have to hear any of that stuff. So. Mm -hmm. City manager's report. Thank you, Your Honor. Brian Powell, city manager. We are super pleased to have here with us a new executive director for CAFA. 
And what I would like to do for the report is turn this time over to Sharon Steinert, who is a board member at CAFA, and then she would uh, introduce our um, new communities executive director, Sharon. Thank you very much, Bryant. And good evening, Mayor and members of the Council. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Ray Villa. He uh, joined CAFA, which is the Community Alliance Against Family Abuse that serves families in crisis in the northern Pinnell and eastern Maricopa counties, and has now for 20 years. And so he was able to uh, uh, celebrate with us at our 20th anniversary open house, and we're delighted about that. Um, Ray comes to us with a host of talents, and particularly in the area of building relationships and collaborations. And he has a host of skills that he also brings to us from his years in law enforcement. He has spent 21 years uh, on the Chandler Police Department, 18 of which as a crisis negotiator. And so he uh, has a, f a deep understanding of what domestic violence can do to a family. Uh, he is uh, recently retired from the Mesa Police Department, where he was a neighborhood services director. And so we are delighted uh, as the board and the staff also to welcome Ray, and we are excited about our future under his leadership. So I'm going to have Ray stand and be introduced to the community. If I, if I just have a moment to just share just a couple of words. Uh, it's been a pleasure coming here. Uh, like uh, Sharon said, you know, I have a whole lot of history working with community both in Chandler and with Mesa over the last 28 years. So I've had a really great opportunity to work with different groups of people. And one of the things that I've uh, cherished during that whole time is my ability to build relationships of various different groups across the country. And not only uh, in this East Valley, but also across the, the state of Arizona. So I feel we're privileged to be a part of CAFA. And let me just say this, uh, what kind of gem you have here in Apache Junction. Just recently, uh, my first week there, I was doing some research about domestic violence shelters across the country and I happened to look up what the top 100 were in the country, and guess which was number three in the state of Arizona? Wow. CAFA was number three in the state of Arizona, behind UMOM and Emerge in Tucson, UMOM in Phoenix and Emerge in Tucson. That's here in Apache Junction. And we were number 75th in the nation out of 2,300 shelters and programs that were rated across the state. So let me tell you something, you have a gem here. And if it wasn't for people like Sharon, who had a vision and an imagination to create something special here that really helps uh, victims in this kind of arena, that's what we need, especially nowadays. And let me tell you, I, as an investigator <clears throat> in the past where I had to investigate uh, a domestic violence situation that turned bad and the wife was killed, there is nothing worse than being in a, in a situation where somebody finally decides to make a decision and she ends up losing her life as a result of it. So I'm looking forward to being a part of this wonderful community, working closely with anybody that wants to work with us, because let me tell you something, we're gonna make a difference. Not only here in Apache Junction, but all of uh, Northern Pinal County and the east side of Maricopa County. So thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. You're welcome. welcome. Thank you, Ray, very much. We know you will make a big difference, and, and, and CAFA has made such a big difference. And Sharon, thank you for everything. And Your Honor, that concludes my report. Okay, thank you. We're also privileged tonight to have from Phoenix, uh, members of the Bureau of Land Management and uh, Leon Thomas, if you can introduce the rest of your teammates and let us know what's going on with the properties out here and what good things you do. Good evening, Mayor, Council. <laughs> for the record, I'm Leon Thomas, District Manager for the Phoenix District Bureau of Land Management. So happy to be here. I just want to take a quick moment just to introduce myself and also just talk a little bit about the Phoenix District. So the Phoenix District of the BLM makes up the middle third of the state of Arizona. So our district spans from the Utah border all the way down to the international border with Mexico. The northern half of the district is the Haciampa Field Office, which is managed by Rem Hawes. 
And we also have the southern half of the district, which is the Lower Sonoran Field, field Office, which is managed by Mr. Ed Kender. I also have with me uh, Wayne Munger, who is our uh, Sonoran Desert National Monument Manager and Assistant Field Manager for the Lower Sonoran Field Office. And I have Mariella Castaneda, who is our District Public Affairs Officer. So we're very happy to be here. Uh, my philosophy and the cornerstone of what we do is we lean in to the communities and we ensure that uh, we are available and that we uh, are there to listen to what you all have to say as far as uh, what's going to move the community forward and what is going to help the community to strive for the goals that it has set up in this uh, city plan. And so we want to make sure we're there leaning in and we want to make sure that you all know that you have a voice when it comes to us. And uh, we're action oriented and I hope that the interactions that we've had with you all thus far has proven so. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, once again, Ed Kender to come on up and talk about some of the projects and uh, things of interest for your community. Thank you. Thank you, Leon. Mayor, Chair, uh, council members, thank you for uh, allowing us time to address the city of Apache Junction and some of the different projects that we're working on that are related to your city. Uh, I'd like to go back uh, actually Whoops. A uh, little overview of the Lower Sonoran Field Office is that uh, we manage 1.4 million acres of surface land and 1.3 million acres of subsurface, which is a split of state for mineral rights. And also, uh, we, as Leon said, that we manage from the central part, I-10, south to the border. Uh, these lands that we manage are provide uh, rich, diverse uh, recreation opportunities, mining, mineral extraction, uh, wildlife habitat, grazing, wilderness, all overlaying a rich cultural um, past. We oversee six wilderness areas, uh, the Sonoran Desert National Monument, four areas of critical environmental concern. Uh, we also manage a congressionally designated Juan Batista de Anza His National Historic Trail, Painted Rock, which is uh, west of Gila Bend, which is also listed on national historic uh, tra uh, places. Uh, some of the projects that we're working on with the, uh, the City of Apache Junction is Recreational Public Purposes Act. Uh, we recently received applications from Liz as far as uh, some expired permits and going into renewal of them. Uh, the first one that we addressed was the equestrian trail system uh, outlined in the red hashed area and just recently signed the renewal for 25 years and looking forward to having that relationship for the next 25 years with the uh, equestrian trails. Uh, the next one was the Prospector Park. Uh, what we're doing now is uh, we've been working with Liz for the last year in updating the plan of development and this is in conjunction with the next uh, RMPP application that, we are, uh, that we've had, which is also the uh, rodeo grounds, which in, on the map, the Prospector Park is in the center, the yellow, the rodeo grounds is in the lower part, lower right hand blue. Uh, what, we're looking, what we were asked to do and what we are going to proceed with is renewing the application but amending both planned developments to carve out uh, approximately 90 acres, maybe 80 acres, uh, for the parking area, the rodeo grounds, take it out of the Prospector Park and attach it to the planning development for the rodeo grounds, and then per, uh, proceed with, the, after the renewal, the patent process, which would def, uh, tend perpetuity to the Recreation and Public Purposes Act for each one of them. The rodeo grounds, as you can see, in the blue hashed area, in the lower right is the grounds, the other part just to the north and to the little bit of west is the 90 acres total to carve out for the parking. And again, <clears throat> proceed with the renewal and then the patent process. The last part that we were working with that is not Apache Junction but within Pinal County is the Peralta Park. That is in the lower right hand corner of the map. It's a little dog leg. That is 480 acres. Uh, it's, uh, they received an application with Pinal County for an RPP application as well. This is to, uh, going through the process right now of uh, their plan and development to include hiking trails, uh, non-motorized trails, camping, stargazing, rock climbing. 
And as a uh, point of contact, again, Leon Thomas is the district manager. I'm the field manager, and Wayne Monger is the Sonora Desert National Monument manager and my assistant field manager. At this point in time, I'd like to entertain any questions that you may have. Anyone have any questions? Yeah. No, but I mean, just like a little clarity. Yeah. That's all. On the um, parking area that you're carving out a prospect for yes, the rodeo grounds. Yes, ma'am. Is that the acreage? Liz, you'll know better what I'm talking about. Are we talking about from the driveway off all the way over? Oh, man. Oh, wow. That takes out a lot of trails. No. You can, yeah, come up, Liz. Yeah, come up and explain to me where where this is. Um, thank you, uh, Councilmember Barker. That is the area that is currently being utilized for parking oh, at the, the rodeo grounds. So everything, at, yep, everything that's outside of the fenced area. When we went back to look at our renewal application, one of the things that was holding it up was the fact that we were kind of not using those leases you know, totally properly. So our parking that was carved out, even though we had letters of agreement from BLM talking about it's a burned out area and so that was getting utilized for parking at the time. Okay. It's not part of the rodeo grounds lease currently and so to do everything right and to um, amend everything properly, we need to pull that out of Prospector Park and attach it to okay. the rodeo grounds. And it's, it's pretty much already the whole okay. burned out area. I just so. didn't want to see nope. all, the, all that trail yep. system there. No, no, <laughs> no not, not so. Thank you. Anyone else? Your Honor? Yes. Could you briefly explain the advantage of the patent process? Patent process, oh, well, with the, renew with the RMPP Act, uh, we have a lease for 5, 10, 15, 25 years. Currently, at the time that these were awarded were 25 years ago, and they all came for renewal at the same time. So every so many years, for however long the lease was, we would have to renew it. Uh, as far as the patent, it, that would actually go into perpetuity. Yeah. So there would do, be no expiration on the re, uh, lease, it would just be forever. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. But use is different. Use is different from a patent, from either outright purchase as well. Yeah. It's all more better than before. And I just pleased that uh, that you've taken the time to come out and you're very accessible and uh, what public servants are about. And I appreciate you guys staying late like this and you'll find that the traffic going back is much nicer this time <laughs> of night. You'll just fly right back home. Very good. And thank you. Just you, to clarify. You, as a community, we enjoy it. And we really like the idea yeah. of working together with you to uh, yeah. work something out on the whole. Yeah, all areas. those properties mean so much to the community. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's been, a, it's been a good relationship and we want to keep that moving forward in the right direction. Thank you. Just to clarify, Mr. Mayor, the, the uses in the RPMP lease and the patent are the same. Right. Yes. It's only when you go to the purchase that right. that's when the, the uses can change. Thank you. But you don't have to. Anything else? No, thank Thanks. you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Leon. And uh, selection of meeting dates and times. Your Honor. Yes. I move that an executive session at 6 p.m. and a work session at 7 p.m. be held on Monday, November 19th, 2018 in the City Council Conference Room and City Council Chambers located at 300 East Superstition Boulevard, Apache Junction, Arizona, respect Second. Roll call. Councilmember Rizzi? Yes. Vice Mayor Wilson? Yes. Councilmember Barker? Yes. Councilmember Strubel? Yes. Councilmember Evans? Yes. Councilmember Waldron? Yes. Mayor Surdy? Yes. Unanimous, Your Honor. And the next meeting? Your Honor? Yes. I move an executive session at 6 p.m. and a work session at 7 p.m. be held on Tuesday, November 20th, 2018 in the City Council Conference Room and City Council Chambers, 300 East Superstition Boulevard, Apache Junction, Arizona, respectively. Second. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Struble? Yes. Councilmember Rizzi? Yes. Councilmember Evans? Yes. Vice Mayor Wilson? Yes. Councilmember Waldron? Yes. Councilmember Barker? Yes. Mayor Surdy? Yes. Unanimous, Your Honor. This is the time for the public to express requests, communications, comments, and suggestions. 
Each speaker must have already filled out a request to speak from the handed in to the city clerk before the end of the city manager's report. All issues shall be presented in a professional manner without personal attacks. Under open meeting law, the council cannot engage in discussion on the issues presented, but may respond to criticism and may direct staff to follow up with the speaker directly and or place the matter on a future agenda for council discussion. There's a three minute time limit and I have one speaker and that is Michael or Mikkel Vandermolen. Hello, my name is Mikkel Vandermolen. I am a resident and an equestrian. Could we get your address for the record? I'm on Vista, <coughs> just north of Junction, east of Tomahawk. Okay. And um, the Weeks Wash runs up through there north and crosses uh, Superstition at Chaparral. And I know an awful lot of horsemen do use that trail right there. And it crosses uh, Weeks Wash just west of the bridge on Superstition. And I think it would be behoove the community if we could have horse crossing signs there as well as all the crossovers we have going into the property all along the city and everything. Because we only have horse crossing signs um, at very few places, one of them being on Superstition just west of the fire station. But there are several crossovers on these roads that um, it would be good to have horse crossing signs due to the amount of horse traffic we're gonna have going out and around, especially at this time of year. And also, um, I thought it would good be good for the um, community to also have a little notice on their electronic sign down there on the corner of um, the trail and Phelps about when horses around slow down, that type of thing, because you do see an awful lot of horses going around on some of these roads and riding in the median of Apache Trail. And so that was just my concerns. And I would appreciate if you folks would take that into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Anyone thank you. care to respond? Yeah, I, I would really like to ask uh, our city manager to speak with Public Works about the possibilities of carrying that out. And Chip, yeah. you're probably familiar with those areas, so if you'd work with them yeah. and help, that'd be great. Okay. All right. If nothing else, then uh, we will adjourn the meeting. Thank <clears throat> you.